Meatball time! I am Stephanie. And I'm Adam. And welcome to Meeple Talk. So this time we're going to be talking about Castles of Mad King Ludwig. Yeah, so this game is a game about building castles. It came out in 2014. Uh, it's printed by Bezier Games and it's for one to four players. Mm -hmm. So if you have a larger group of people, only four players. Don't do it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Whatever you do. Just back away. <laughs> exactly. Um, so generally the idea of this game is that you are hopefully a mad king uh, and you're going to be building Crazy. your castle. And so you might be able to see from this uh, layout, there's different types of room tiles. And what they might represent are, for example, certain types of sleeping rooms or activity rooms or uh, the great outdoors. And what you're going to be doing throughout the game is that you're going to be buying certain types of rooms and uh, and figuring out uh, from your foyer, uh, either connecting rooms directly to each other or to different hallways, and just trying to come out with a really interesting arrangement with uh, how your castle uh, is shaping out. Um, as you build, you are going to be earning victory points if you complete a room. And what that means is that every room tile that you have, there's a certain number of entrances, if you connect your entrance to another room or hallway and all of them are connected in some fashion, the room is going to be considered complete. And so you'll get not only victory points for the type of room it is, but you might have certain bonuses if it's uh, next to or uh, like adjacent to or uh, connected to another type of room or sometimes minus points. So, for example, I have an activity room that will take away points if you're next to a sleeping room because the idea is you don't really want someone playing tennis next to someone who's taking a nap. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's the general idea about the actual building and having your castle come to life. Yes, so uh, so the way a turn would work is in each turn, or in each round I should say, mm -hmm. the one player is the builder and they get mm -hmm. this little white cool looking building tile and sit in front of them. And so the first thing that they do on their turn is uh, any buildings, or I should say, uh, rooms that have been bought, there may be some holes here because other people have bought some buildings, so there might be a few that are missing. So the first thing you'll do is you'll play out a few cards, and these cards are building cards that have uh, pictures of rooms on them. So for example, this is a 400 room, so that's a square room. I'll play that out. Uh, here's a 150 room, which is a circle. I'll play that out on another spot. And basically, you fill in all these holes. This third one is going to be an angle room. Mm -hmm. So the builder yeah, fills yeah. out the rest of the rooms. And then after that, he gets to rearrange these rooms according to how much they're going to cost. Because throughout the game, in order to get a room, you have to pay for it. You have to pay. Mm -hmm. You start out with... Uh, 15,000 marks. 15,000 marks. Thank mm -hmm. you. And uh, so you need to pay whatever these rooms are going to cost. Now, mm -hmm. some buildings, um, after everyone has chosen you put a coin on them, so rooms that aren't taken um, in a particular round will then cost less, or you'll get some money. They'll become in, in more a, enticing in as result. time goes on. But yes, that's right. Um, but the most important thing is that the, the builder gets to say how much these buildings are going to cost. So, for example, if he has a room that he really wants, doesn't want anyone else to buy it, he might say, okay, that one's going to cost 15000 uh, and this room that nobody wants, maybe there's a basement room, you need stairs in order to have a basement room. So if nobody has stairs, you might say, well, no one's going to buy that. I'll make that worth 1000 mm -hmm. So he gets to control the market, so to speak, during his, during the round when he's the builder. And why that's important, because if, for example, I'm not the builder and I want to buy these rooms, I have to pay the cost directly to the builder. Yes, and this is how the builder makes money, right? So when you're the builder, you're like, hey, cash is going to roll in. So, but you do have to be careful. Let's say, you know, a few people really want a, some kind of a food room. Um, you don't want to make it 15000 So, because maybe they'll be like, oh, that's too expensive. So you have to say, well, mm -hmm. where's a good spot where they're going to pay me a lot of money, but they're not going to say it's not worth it. We, that we wouldn't be priced out of the market. Because what I could yes. always do, if I really can't either afford the room I want or the ones that are affordable, either I can't place or they're just bad mm -hmm. selections. What I could always do is just... For my turn instead of build, I can just take 5,000 marks from the central bank. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you can choose money instead of room. And the third so you option. balance the incentives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the third option that you have is there are both stairs and corridors that you can choose for 3,000. And there's a limited number of them, but basically, any time during your turn, if you decide not to get a building or money, you can take one of these. And the stairs will build you will allow you to build a downstairs room. And there's a few rooms that are black, and they're downstairs rooms. 
those are the only things that can connect to a to a downstairs stairs so those are the options that you have as a builder now what happens after the builder does that the player next to them gets to play and they get to choose a building or, or choose money or choose one of these and they give the builder the money so the builder makes money during his turn and the builder's the last person to play which is why i said if there's a you know a room that the builder really wants he might price that out uh so so that's how the uh, a, 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 a single turn works and you basically keep playing until winning conditions have been met yeah and to help guide you in your building uh there's a couple things that you can focus on um so one uh everyone has these uh, little placards that have different bonuses or benefits for completing a certain room type. So for example, if I complete an outdoor room, I'll get extra 10,000 marks. If I complete a utility room, I'll get an extra utility card and I'll describe those in just a second. Um, or, or some other or extra victory points. So there's uh, little incentives for help you to decide, okay, which room do I want to make? Other than, you know, seeing how crazy, I've got a French gazebo next to a train room. It's yes. all gnawed. <laughs> uh, so these are some of the ways that you can guide in your, your building. Also, there's a couple of um, mini goals, so to speak. So you might notice at the bottom of this castle, these four circular uh, tiles. What those are, they're referred to as the king's favors. And um, every game you have a pile of these that you can choose. So you randomly set four of them. And these will be a set of victory points conditions uh, that you can work towards that happen at the end of the game. So for example, this one represents uh, activity rooms and the square footage of activity rooms. You'll notice that with the different shapes of rooms, they have different sizes and square footage. So in this one, at the end of the game, the person who gets the most square footage of the activity room, uh, they'll get eight victory points. And, and people who play second, third, and fourth, they'll get fewer victory points. Um, this one has to do with, at the end of the game, the player with the most uh, marks, the most money, uh, or the most number of square-sized or square-shaped uh, rooms in their castle. And so this is uh, one of the ways that you can target how you're going to be building. Also, as I mentioned earlier, these utility cards. Um, at the beginning of the game, everyone can select two. They originally handed three and they picked two. Um, also, every time you complete a utility room, you can have a chance to draw for one of these cards. And these are your personal private uh, goal here. So for example, for my set, I have, I can earn victory point for every type of uh, stair or corridor style room. Uh, also two victory points for every room that is equal 100 uh, square feet uh, in, in, in size. And so this kind of balance is not only uh, a group goal uh, that they're competing each other with, but also your own personal uh, goal as well to help guide in that building. And I think it's really smart that way. Uh, I think this game uh, plays with not only a, an interactive competitive style game with the design of this building market uh, with the builder, but it also is your own little individualized game too, because everyone has this opportunity to create unique castles and there's so many types of rooms that you can choose from that the combinations you have are essentially endless yeah and so it's really satisfying when you're building to see this come to light and to come to fruition and artwork amazing i love the way how the entire board itself mm -hmm. was designed as its own castle yeah so this game has uh, like three different components so depending on what people are interested in like if you like you know, the Lego style of putting things together and trying to make them fit because all of these different buildings, they fit perfectly together. If you're trying to align things up to make a building fit into a small space, it's really interesting how it's designed like that. The reason I mentioned Lego is because Lego snaps together perfectly. Then these buildings do, you know, depending on how you make your arrangement. Um, and so on, on one hand, there's the actual castle that you're building. On the second hand, there's this set collection, which is really awesome. The idea that everyone is competing for for these set collections. So, you know, for example, if you see someone who, you know, for example, this activity room here, um, you know, if you see someone is getting a larger square footage, you can maybe try to maneuver so that they can't get those uh, buildings or those rooms in the future, and, and you'll get them instead. And you're and you're competing against the other players here, but also you've got your private goals that. You know, people don't know what you're up to, but they can infer maybe what you're up to. Maybe you have a lot of circle rooms and they say they're probably collecting circle rooms. So I'll make those more expensive. So there's a lot of things you can do to, uh, you know, try to prevent other people from getting ahead. Um, but you can't do too much. So it's there's there's in, in no way is there any kind of like mere mean spiritedness or, or a way that you can wreck somebody else's game. 
And I would have to agree because um, the way I like uh, how they designed the competitive component of this game is that it's one where you can hinder someone else's plans mm -hmm. just by the way you design the overall market. Uh, but it's not one of pure sabotage. So as you're laying and building your castle, uh, there's never going to be any point where your rumors are going to be destroyed. You're going to lose out on victory points somehow because someone else took some kind of uh, uh, action against you. So I really like how they balance that out. And mm -hmm. there's a little bit of a component for everybody. So if you like the, the competitive market, if you like the economic version of it, uh, you've got that element in there. If you love designing and just seeing how your castle grows and comes to life you've got your own personal mini game that you can invest in which is also very satisfying i feel like you're always accomplishing something throughout the entire game it's not something where you're going to sit back and and either get booted out early on or, or anything like that there's always this sense of satisfaction of being able to do something yeah and then e even if even if you come in last place there's the fat satisfaction of completing some of these set collection goals for, mm -hmm. for example you know if you got your eight points here then you're like yeah i did that and then you know if you did really well mm -hmm. with one of your cards you know for for each of your you know activity mm -hmm. rooms i get i get two victory points maybe i had five of those and i felt really good about that and then so I really like that fact. Um, you really feel like you're accomplishing things in the game, even if you actually aren't winning. I also liked seeing how yeah. everyone decided to build their castles, whether they're super compact and no space wasted, versus hallways upon hallways that seem to stretch forever. Yeah, I'm definitely a hallways upon hallways <laughs> and always basements. <laughs> I'm the first to go for basements, and mm -hmm. I try to maximize the whole basement scoring thing, so that's just what I like so to do. So depending on how many people are playing, so. you may have to allow for a larger table service if people want to expand out. Yeah, um, so yeah, that might be one of the kind of minor negatives if you don't have a big mm -hmm. table. Um, they do try to make allowances for that by making the board kind of like where two players can fit in here and two players can fit mm -hmm. there, but you still need a fairly wide board in order to play this. Mm -hmm. You can't play it on a train for certain. <laughs> yeah, so. and, I, and I think the other detractor too, uh, Adam was having a conversation with me earlier where you mentioned the decision-making time lag, uh, whether you're the builder and you're trying to figure out what the best you know combination of dollars versus room uh, mm -hmm. uh, types are or when you're finally bought your piece and you're trying to figure oh wait that didn't fit quite where i thought where else can i put it sometimes that could be a, a negative factor that the decision making leg that tends to, to happen but it doesn't always happen i yeah. think overall even whether you're winning or losing i still think it's it's a fun game mm -hmm. i i to me i whenever i play it i'm just delighted i love this game yeah yeah, so I really like it too. I like the, you know, both the set collection and the castle designing. Mm -hmm. I guess there's everything about the game is is very enjoyable to me. I, I play it anytime it's on the table. The only neg other negative I can think of is uh, the setup. So there's a lot of different pieces you have to set up. And then the takedown, you have to put them all in little baggies. Otherwise, if you throw them all in a big box. They pretty much have a baggie for then, every single component. Yes, they, they, they do supply the baggies here. Yes. <laughs> they are great baggie <laughs> suppliers. But uh, there's a lot of components to be put away. So that's, you know, if you're if you're limited on time, you have just enough it's time to play. It's not a quick and dirty setup. Mm -hmm. You know, you might go over a little bit. So, mm -hmm. yeah, that's the only other really downside I can see. It's a really enjoyable game yeah. to play, and it's different from other games. I can think of a couple of other games that are similar. There was a Princess of Florence, which I personally really like. It didn't hit the table too often, um, but this is like Princess of Florence on steroids. Or Alhambra is another <laughs> one. Uh, Alhambra is a very, you know, very simplified version of this mm -hmm. in the sense of building things building, yeah. and and putting them in the right places. Uh, but this game takes it way, way to another level. So yeah, I just think it's quite yes. maddening and quite delightful. So. <laughs> and kingly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yes. But so. <laughs> uh, yeah, so overall, I say give it a try. Yes. Um, but another oh, game that we liked, we we we're reviewed talk a lot about of other games. games now? Okay, <laughs> sure, go. No, for it. <laughs> I'm just saying that um, the games that we reviewed recently, we like them all. But I'm just letting you know, we don't like every game. We just really did like these. So there you go. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, thank you very much for walk for walking for watching us. <laughs> this has been Meeple Talk, and this is the review of Castles of Mad King Ludwig. Thank you very much for watching. See you later. Bye.
Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.